Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and this is my 1957 Ford 800 series tractor. And today we're going to replace the exhaust system on it. And I am here at the shop of Jim from Do Right Fabrication. How y'all doing today? And he is an expert in all things mechanical. And we're going to go ahead and remove this nasty exhaust system and replace it with new parts. All right, so what we're doing here for Brett is we're replacing everything here with new components. So we, we're not going to spend a lot of time trying to work these old exhaust bolts loose. Somebody's even brazed it on here. I don't know if you can see there's an issue in the past. Somebody's brazed this on here. One of the things I like to do before I start any of these projects is give everything a little shot of knocker loose. If you've never tried the CRC product, it's way better than PB Blaster. Uh, Project Farm even did a video and found this to be one of the top contenders for getting stuff loose. Now, the fact of the matter is that we're probably going to wind up breaking this off. I mean, I know that. Everybody knows that. We'll get around the corner here and give her a little love because, you know, nothing says love like lubrication. Exactly. So, we're going to go with a six-point uh, socket on here because we may even wind up rounding this off. We'll just try to give it a It even rounded off the six point. So next thing is gonna be a pair of vice grips, the big pair of vice grips. If that doesn't get it off, we'll go to a die grinder and we'll just cut the bottom off there. Here's a little tip. If you needed to save these parts, use oil and heat cycles. That a lot of times will help. You, you, you'll put lubrication on it, run it through a heat up cycle, spray it while it's hot, let it cool down warm it back up with some more lubrication, run some heat cycles through that, and that a lot of times helps that penetrant get down inside there. So the next step is we're just going to uh, try a big old brute pair of vice grips. If vice grips don't work, then we'll, we'll either go to a cutoff wheel, and if a cutoff wheel doesn't work, then we'll go to the fire axe because nothing ever fails the fire axe. All right, so I'm going to go with these the pair of 10R vice grips. As you can see, due to heat and a lot of corrosion, the steel has become one. All right, so we're just using a typical four and a half inch angle grinder here with one of these Osborne wheels on it. Uh, here's another one. I like these. These tend to last a little longer than some of the, the cheapy ones you get. And But the thing I really like about it, if you see, it's less than 40 thousandths in thickness. And I've never had one of these come apart on me. So it makes a nice tight curve to get under here. We're just going to take it and just cut this nut right off or bolt right there. That's going to be hot. Like your best friend's mom in high school. So you can see the nut wasn't going to come off there. You see all that was in between. Now, Brett's managed to do all the rest of the exhaust is now loose. With a little help from the knocker loose. We've got just about all the rest of them done. This is obviously brazed on here. So the next order of operations is probably going to be to cut this pipe and then see if we can force this around and, and pivot this joint some so we can get in here and cut this uh, out of here because there's nothing here we're salvaging. coming off. You can see there's literally nothing left here. Second to love is the suitable application of force with a ball peen hammer. So you know if a hammer, a, a regular size hammer is good, a bigger hammer is better. But while, naturally while we had the camera I just gave it one gentle whack right there and it came loose. You can see that it already started to to come here. So the one thing we want to try to be real careful of is that we don't break this ear on the other side. Let's give it a little bit of gentle love. Nothing crazy. And what we've done by moving, turning that around is now I can get in here with the grinder and I can take the head off this and then we're good to go. Don't usually recommend taking this handle off, but in this application there's no way to get in here otherwise. See, it made quick work of that. 
So we'll give it a little motivation here with this, this uh, pry bar. Just get underneath it only because, you know, it's really hot. And again, I don't want to get crazy with the force here. Just a little bit of love and just see if we can, we can work it loose without breaking that ear. That ear is, is really important to not break it because we don't want to put an intake manifold on this thing. We'll give it a little love with the knocker loose. Of course, what we found here with this one is that the bolt was actually seized on the inside of here too. So hopefully a knocker loose will work through there a little bit. And we can get it off without the application of too much force. All right, what we're going to do is apply just a little bit of heat with one of these burns matic torches. I don't want to get the fire axe out yet because we'll do a hot cold cycle. We'll hit it with some of that knocker loose and let it contract and hopefully it'll suck it in there. This doesn't get it, then we'll take the grinder in here and we'll come in and cut this off all the way through. The reason I don't want it to be my first choice is I don't want to gouge up this sealing surface by accident when I plunge in there because it's a pretty tight fit. So let's try a little heat first. Bring the knocker loose in here. You can see the old knocker loose is just burning off, so we know we're right at its flashpoint temperature. We'll let it cool for just a minute, and what'll happen is that part will go below its flashpoint temperature. Give it just a second so it doesn't flash. And right now, this piece of cast iron is giving off tons of heat, and that's exactly what we wanted to happen. We wanted it to be nice and hot. And as it cools, it'll contract and hopefully suck a little bit of that down into that space between the, what should have been the old bolt and the, manif the uh, little manifold part. Again, nice gentle pressure here. We're not, we're not going to go crazy. If it doesn't move easy, we'll, we're going to go a different direction here. While I got just a little bit of pressure on it, we'll try to create some vibration in it. Okay, if you look close, what you'll see happened is with that vibration and tapping on it, this bolt has actually started to drop down inside. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can feel it. There is a difference here. So we know we're making headway. What we'll do here is we'll go one more heat cycle with a little knocker loose on there. And uh, we'll try to get that to suck down into that seized up bolt. But we know we moved the bolt, which is what we wanted to do. You know, these applications, this is severely seized. And, and honestly, you know, there's not a lot you can do besides cut these off because they're just so badly seized so deeply. You can just see all the, the old knocker loose is just flashing off. It's got a pretty high flash point temperature. Um, we're, we're throwing quite a bit of heat to it. Another cold cycle. Whoa. Woo. That's okay. Now we do have to take care of that right there. Present. So we can just, Brett has a little bit of a leak right there. We can just put just a little bit of water on it and put it out. See, there's a reason to always have a fire extinguisher ready. These pressurized water cans are what I keep around here because the water doesn't hurt anything. It has just a little bit of soap in it. Put that out nice and easy, no big deal. These old tractors, a lot of these valves, and these old equipment in general, all of them seep just a little bit around that, that valve. There we go, it's moving now. And there you have it. It's just like magic. The knocker loose did the job with a few heat cycles there. Had it put to a little bit of petrochemical fire from, uh, <laughs> from the We'll, we'll not put that on the concrete floor, we'll let it sit there and cool for a minute. Now let's see if we can get that stud to... Yep, going right out. What's interesting is the tab is still there, but I'm glad we didn't pry on it hard because a lot of it is, 
is decrepit just from corrosion on the back side of that manifold back there. But it should still hold good for us. We don't want to hopefully not have to replace a manifold. We'll get a punch and we'll knock that all the way through. There it goes. And there is our problem child. Look at that thing. There's literally nothing left of it. What we got here is just a hair grinder with an abrasive wheel on it. And oh, it just fits. This is why we have to have gaskets because this is pretty uh, pitted, pretty pitted and not flat. But there actually is a receiving flange in here. I don't know if we can yep. get it cleaned out or not. Hopefully we can. <laughs> Much, much better. And if you look, I don't know if, if you can see on the camera can see it, but back here, that flange is almost gone. So it's a good thing we didn't get on there and pry on it hard. Yeah, we would have lost that because we still have a good sealing surface there too. This is a, this is pitting. I'm not going to try to grind the pitting out to get the color out of it. That's why that color it's nice and smooth. It's as smooth as we're going to get it, and that'll give us a good, a much better than we had before exhaust fit up. All right, so this this has an exhaust gasket that fits on there like that, but you still wind up having a, a little bit of a receiving lip here that registers into what might be a, a lip in here to locate this thing so that you don't get it like a whoppy jod. I'm going to take another little wire wheel. Again, this is another Osborne product. I like their, their wheels, these little wire wheels. This one's a brand new one. They last a long time. I'm going to see if I can get any kind of carbon and corrosion out of here, clean this up, see if I can get a bit of fit because what, I, what I'm afraid of here is that we're going to wind up with this, this rocking situation and never get a good, a good gasket fit up. So I'm going to try to clean it out and see what I can come up with. <laughs> So once we got in here and started using the wire wheel to remove it, there's actually a lip there. I thought it was casting. There actually is a lip, but it's been leaking for so long and so many years. So I had to get in there and scrape and wire wheel. The little bit of trouble with the wire wheel is we're at a kind of a funky angle here where we hit at the top, but we were able to get it out of there enough that it will register right in that spot now. And it'll tighten up nice and tight. Yeah, look at that. That's like doggone brand new, man. It is brand new. Well, yeah. It's brand new. <laughs> so we've got some new hardware here. I've already got one installed. Um, this is a three, new 3 8 bolt, an almost useless lock washer, and a, just a standard nut. And then what we're doing here is we're putting some anti-seize, copper impregnated anti-seize compound on it. Uh, not to be uh, confused with anti-skis compound, which you usually carry with you when you go out to the club with your friends. Uh, this will actually keep this from seizing up in the future should he ever try to take it back apart. It's going to smoke a little bit when we first crank it up and it gets hot, but that's okay. It means it's doing its job. All right. All right, so we've got the new muffler here. We've already tightened up this little piece of exhaust manifold. One thing to note on this tractor, this tractor came in several configurations for exhaust. One was the under and out the back exhaust, which is primarily used for mowing. Uh, that keeps limbs and trees and stuff from, from breaking the exhaust off. This tractor also had the typical tractor exhaust which goes up on a stack. Uh, but that's not desirable for the way Brett's going to use it. He's going to use it for mowing under trees and such. So we're going to go ahead and put it back in its configuration. This is the correct exhaust for it. Um, it's an aluminized exhaust as you can see where we took the sticker off it so it didn't melt off. And then we've already put the clamp on it. I'm just going to kind of get it started here and then just take a, a 2x4 so we don't bend up his muffler.
2x4, took the beading instead of the muffler and uh, put the appropriate clamp. So what we're going to do is just put a little pressure on the clamp. Not enough to try to prevent it from moving, more like enough to keep it from falling back off. And then we'll go on and put the rest of the parts on here. Alright, so we've got the correct pipe and another clamp. We've got a little more anti-seize on the threads here in case the Ezra has to take it back off. And this pipe's going to just fish up in front of the alternator. It's kind of a goofy way of doing things if you ask me, but I tried to get a lot of stuff in a small space here, so I do understand. And we'll try to see if we can wedge this in there and just give us something to push with just a little bit. There it goes. Our next step, we won't do a whole lot to this clamp. We'll tighten it down just enough to so it doesn't move around on us. But the next step will be the tailpipe piece and the hanger hangers underneath the tractor. And we want to again leave everything loose because it's going to need to get adjusted into, into place. There we go. That should do good for now. Until we get all this stuff. It still allows the, the muffler to move around until we get everything fit into place. What we got is the exhaust hanger up underneath here. And we're not again not going to tighten anything. All right, so that pipe's there, gives us lots of room to work up here. What we're going to have to do here is get these two together. I'm probably going to have to give it a little love from behind <laughs> to get it together. Can you uh, give me a couple taps back there from the back, Brett? Uh huh. All right, so we'll start at one end, we'll start closest to the engine, and we'll start tightening everything up. And that way we work all the slack out all the way to the end. These are going to get pretty hot and expand when this engine warms up. So it's always necessary to come back afterwards and recheck all these after the engine's gone through a couple of hot cold cycles. It's going to smoke when we first crank this thing up. It's going to smoke quite a bit, and that's to be expected of these things. It's going to burn off the paint. It's going to burn off all the oily fingerprints, the NICs compound. We want to make sure that we're still clear here, because that's a part of this Ford tracker. But what it has done, because these pipes are slightly different, notice that this, motor, this exhaust mount hanger no longer works. Now, this has obviously been added. You know, this is not a factory exhaust hanger. So what we're going to have to do is find another place along the way to support this because that's a long moment coming all the way up to the engine up here and this will vibrate and cause a failure either here or here in the muffler. So we want to stop that vibration and if we support this pipe then it doesn't want to carry the load which is what this did. So, uh, we need to get this hole to this bolt size. So the easiest way to usually do it is do it with a unibit. We're going to try to do it kind of... Uh, in the vise, not really the way it should be done, but I don't really have a set of mini parallels to use here. So we're just going to see if we can punch through it real nice and easy. We'll put just a little bit of oil there, help with lubrication, lubrication on the unibit. And I'll slow the drill press down. side real easy like just to get that burr that always comes from a unibit fully deburred perfect all right so we use one of the transmission case bolts through here uh, this would be no different than a cut flat washer so not worried about any problems in the transmission case itself we'll put this in place and then Give it a quick tighten up. And then what we'll do here is this is going to require two clamps. One clamp has to be here at the union. And unfortunately this union is mid-seam 
so there's no way I can use this clamp for hanging. I'm going to have to put a second one there. That kind of sucks, but it is what it is. We're going to go ahead and give it a little snug. Actually, more than a little snug on an inch and a sixteenth bolt. I'm going to give it a lot of snug. Then I'm going to come along here. There's not really a good position for this clamp to go on. If I turn it around the other way, I can't get to tighten this bolt up. And I don't want to put it down because that's something for the tractor to snag when it runs over stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this clamp down. Then I'm going to bring the grinder in here and I'm going to lop both of these off. It de decreases the amount of area to snag something up. Look at that exhaust, all nice and bright and shiny new. How long do you think that's going to take the flash rust? <laughs> Not long. All right, everybody. Mom on speed dial, fire extinguisher over there standing by in the corner. Here goes nothing. Got a little carburetor work to do to it still. Well, we got the exhaust on it. Jim's tinkered with the carburetor a little bit and got it idling a lot better at lower speeds, so you can hear how much quieter it is now. And we've got a few more issues to address on it. And once we get all those squared away, we'll be good to go. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed a little walk around the old Ford Tracker. They don't build tractors like this anymore. You know, this thing is 1957. I guarantee you it's never been rebuilt. You can see how well it runs. These are great machines, all these series of tractors back when we really built iron the way it should have been built. A uh, little tinker with a carburetor. Carburetor needs to come off it. That'll be in an upcoming video. A uh, couple things we did too. Besides the exhaust today, we gave it a good uh, walk around with a oil can and a grease gun. Uh, we did a little video on how to uh, unconstipate a zerk fitting. So we'll put a link up here if you'd like to see how to unstick a zerk fitting without taking it all apart. Check out the uh, link for the video up above watching guys. All right everyone I hope this helps. This is Brad from Survival Com. Till next time.